Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining. Good evening, guys. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Hi, William. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine too. Excellent. Glad to hear that. That's good. We all have a smile on our face today because you are today graduating from this module, which was Intermediate 1. You've reached the end, the final path, the final road, the final chapter, the final page, the final countdown of this module, which was a great path. We've learned a lot, right? We've learned a lot. Hemos practicado mucho, hemos aprendido mucho, eh, y nos hemos, nos hemos conocido mucho as well. So today is our final day of class. Congratulations to you. You are the ones who have done the work. Ustedes son quienes han hecho el trabajo. You are the ones who put in practice. You are the ones who have been learning every day for the past four weeks. So congratulations to you guys. I'm very proud of the work that we've done. Espero que sientan que han aprendido en este módulo. Y el día de hoy le vamos a dar cierre a todos estos conocimientos reviewing the final exam that we have for this module. So thank you so much for joining today's class, guys. Our final class of this module. So guys, it is um, nine with three minutes. Veo que estamos ahorita siete personas. We have Ariel, we have Claudia. Oh, eight, eight, okay. Ariel, Claudia, Emerson, Catherine, Rocio, William, and Edgardo. Perfect, guys. Maritza just joined, excellent. Awesome, thank you so much for joining. Excellent, guys, today, Para quienes se van uniendo, um, I was just telling you that today we are going to be finishing our class. Vamos a terminar este module que ha sido tan interesante, que hemos aprendido tantas cosas. For example, the present perfect, the past tense, and how they compare to each other. Hemos aprendido muchas cosas así, right? Y hoy le vamos a estar dando cierre a todo eso, guys. But I do want to congratulate you para quienes se van uniendo. Felicidades porque ustedes le han puesto todo el trabajo a este módulo. And I know, I just know that you will do an awesome job in your next module, right? En su siguiente módulo que será intermedio 2, where you will learn so much, 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 much more. And guys, um, well, I do hope que ustedes sientan que durante este módulo han aprendido más que solo los temas de la plataforma, sino que también hemos aprendido many other um, things, right, that you can learn that will be useful for your um, path in learning English or in real life conversations, right? So thank you so much for joining today. Ya es nuestro último día. Ya después nos vamos a vacaciones. Bueno, no vacaciones, right? Vamos a ir trabajando, pero. Um, pero de clase, sí. Until next year. Hasta el próximo año. Or you will receive your next module. So thank you so much for joining once again. El día de hoy vamos a estar viendo nuestro final exam. Vamos a estar cerrando este module con nuestro final exam. I know that many of you already did it. Yo sé que varios de ustedes ya lo hicieron, su final exam, ya tienen su diploma. You're, it's so great. I'm so happy for you. Mejor, porque si ya lo tienen listo, ahorita se están tardando un poquito más los diplomas en generarse. Así que si ya lo tienen muy bien por ustedes. Y si ya lo tienen y están aquí, gracias al doble. Thank you so much for participating. Vamos a aclarar cualquier duda que pueda haber quedado, right? 
so I do see that we are 13 people right now. We have Maritza, Ariel, Claudia, Edgardo, Emerson, Joel, Carla, Katrin, Marcela, Beatriz, Rocio, and William. Perfect, guys. Good evening, everyone. How are you? I'm fine, you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to hear that you're okay, that you're good. All right, guys. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Ahorita estamos en la screen de congratulations to you for reaching the end of the module. Y ahorita vamos a pasarnos al screen de la vida real, which is the module, right? <laughs> Now, ya hemos hecho un review de lo que hemos visto. Ustedes saben que tuvimos five sections. In section one, we reviewed the past tense. Comenzamos a ver el past tense, right? Statements with be, questions with be, was, where, todo eso. Cómo usarlo y cómo hacer preguntas y vimos used to, right? Used to, algo que uno solía hacer, pero ya no hace. No longer, you no longer do it. También vimos um, countables and non-countable nouns. Countables, for example, three oranges, four glasses, three, uh, three pencils, five t-shirts. Los podemos contar con números regulares. And non-countable nouns, we need units of measurement. Unidades de medida, right? For example, a glass of milk. No podemos decir one milk, sino one gallon of milk, one liter of milk, one pound of cheese, one piece of cheese, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? A tablespoon of butter, a block of butter, et cetera. Vimos las expresiones de cantidad, a lot of, a few, y cuáles usar según countables o non-countable noun. And we saw indirect questions. Se recuerdan que estuvimos haciendo un ejercicio de cómo hacer las preguntas de manera directa y de manera indirecta, right? Do you remember about that? It's called. Yes. yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent, guys. So for example, Mm -mm -mm. We, were, we remember that in direct questions, we use them to be polite. Las usamos para ser educados o para ser respetuosos, right? So instead of asking, who is she? Diríamos, who, uh, do you know who she is? Y usábamos expresiones como, do you know? Uh, can you tell me? Would you tell me? May I ask? Do you mind if I etcétera, etcétera. Eso nos podía servir mucho en circunstancias en donde tendríamos que mostrar respeto or that we just want to be polite, right? That was section two. In section three, we had two things. Number one, we have our, had our regular section en donde vimos evaluations with adjectives and nouns depending on adjectives, depending on nouns, y cómo hacíamos esas evaluaciones, right? And comparisons. Cuando hacíamos evaluaciones, solo decíamos sobre una cosa, y cuando hacemos comparison, estamos comparando dos cosas, right? For example, the apartment is not big enough, o this apartment is bigger than my house, for example. Comparamos dos cosas o con evaluations, damos una crítica o, o un punto de ver de una sola cosa. And we also learned about expressing wishes. Recordamos que a la hora de usar wishes y de decir I wish, vamos a usar siempre wear. I wish I wear rich. I wish he were uh, nicer. 
I wish I were taller. Siempre usaremos where. Right? Cuando estemos usando I wish para expressing wishes. Y en nuestra section 3, justo en el medio, también hicimos el midterm test. Que ustedes se recuerdan, tuvo siete partes. Listening, using the past tense, vocabulary exercise, uh, used to exercises, ordering the words, an exercise about indirect questions, and a reading exercise. Nuestras sections se fueron volviendo más y más cortas, a modo que la section 4 solo tenía two topics. Topic number one, the simple past, que lo vimos en la section 1, versus this new topic, that's the present perfect. Dijimos, y lo hemos dicho hasta el cansancio, yo sé, pero estamos haciendo un review, que el simple past se queda en el pasado, right? Lo que pasó, pasó entre tú y yo. Y The present perfect es algo que viene desde el pasado y llega hasta el presente. Había venido pasando, sucediendo, o sabiéndose, o existiendo, y se queda hasta aquí y ya no pasa al futuro, right? Ya el futuro ya es otra cosa, ya es section 5. Entonces, simple past, I did my homework, yo la hice. Present perfect. I have been doing my homework. Yo he estado haciendo mi tarea. La estoy haciendo, la vengo haciendo desde antes y la estoy haciendo aún. La estoy haciendo ahorita. So, I did it. Ya la hice, quedó en el pasado, ya la terminé. Vea, ya estuve, ya me olvidé de ella. I have been doing my homework. He estado haciendo. Durante este tiempo he estado trabajándola y ahorita I am still working on it. Right? I bought a house o I have been saving money to buy my house. He estado ahorrando para comprar mi casa. Right? Y, finally, vimos e hicimos ejercicios hasta el cansancio, right? The present perfect. Y luego vimos los sequence adverbs. Sequence adverbs The order of things, para hacer listas, para hacer procesos. For example, um, uh, first I get up and take a shower, then I brush my teeth, after that I have a breakfast, and next I go off to work, and after that I return home, and finally I go to sleep, right? Para eso nos sirven los sequence adverbs. Y finalmente llegamos a la section 5, que es lo que estuvimos viendo esta semana. En la section 5, solo teníamos un topic, which was the future. Y en el future, vimos going to y vimos will. And how we are going to be using those. Going to and will, pero al final del día, eh, pongamos las reglas que pongamos. Al final del día, vamos a usar ambos, going to and will, para uh, el future. Aplicado ya a la vida real, ustedes van a escuchar que esto no se apega tanto a las reglas y la gente ocupa going to y will como se le pega la gana. Um, but yeah. So, ustedes pueden llegar a escuchar a alguien que va a decir, yeah, I'll go to the supermarket later. O, I'm going to the supermarket, you want to go? Right? Entonces, como yo siempre les he dicho, no nos clavemos tanto en la regla. Sí sepámosla, in the back of our brain, así como le di risa a Maritza. Um, <risa> <risa> but, uh, sepámoslas, cono conozcámoslas, que no se nos olviden, tengámoslas por ahí, archivadas, pero no nos sofoquemos, right? No querramos esa. ¿Cuál era, right? Sino que nos fluya. Y todo esto nos lleva a este día, que es nuestro último día de este módulo, en donde vamos a ver el final exam, guys. En estos 15 minutos anteriores hemos visto un review hiper mega rápido. Y ahora sí vamos a pasar a resolver nuestro final exam, right? ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta antes que comencemos a resolver el final?
No. Cool. Perfect. No problem. All right. So, nuestro final exam consists of eight parts. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Letter A, listening exercise. Then, a vocabulary exercise. After that, enough and not enough. Esto es un exercise de countables and uncountables. After that, otro exercise, the countables and non-countables, as many or as much. After that, expressing wishes, right? Next, nuestros exercises, the simple past versus present perfect. De los que hemos hecho hasta el cansancio. Yo por algo yo sé por qué les dejé los exercises. Ahora no les debería de costar. Then, uh, letter G, an exercise with will and going to. And finally, tenemos un reading and comprehension, right? So, déjenme pausar aquí porque si no, no me va a cargar. Ay, guys. Hemos llegado al final tan rápido. Oh, my God. ¿Será que me carga? ¿Será que no me va a cargar? Let's see. What is going on? Ok, guys. So, como les decía, lo que nos carga esto, como les decía, yo sé de que varios ya hicimos este final test. Sin embargo, para fines educativos, vamos a continuar practicando, all right? O en caso de que haya quedado alguna duda. So, guys, este es nuestro first exercise, listening. De nuestras ocho partes, este es el primero. Listening. Este listening, para aquellos que no hayan hecho su final exam aún, este listening, ustedes lo pueden escuchar tantas veces como sea necesario para ustedes para resolver esto. Hoy no es que lo vayamos a estar resolviendo, right? no es que les voy a dejar grabadas las respuestas, pero sí los vamos a estar discutiendo y hablando y en caso que haya alguna pregunta. So, For this first exercise, we have just four questions. Solo cuatro, guys. Just four questions. We have a question about Jen, a question about Seth, a question about Karen, and a question about Doug. Una pregunta por listening. So right now, let's go ahead and listen. Okay? Vamos a escucharlo y después vamos a discutirlo. Listen to the conversations. Check the correct answers. One. I just love my new apartment. That's great, Jen. What do you like about it? Everything. First of all, it's not as noisy as my old apartment. Yeah, it was pretty noisy. And another thing, it has two bathrooms. My family visits me often, so it'll be more convenient. That's good. And what's the rent like? That's what I like the most. It's not as expensive as my old apartment. I can finally start saving some money. Two. I was late to work again today. There's just too much traffic. I know. And then there are never enough parking spaces. Exactly. I can never find a place to park my car. So, Seth, why don't you move downtown? You could live near your office. I'd like to. The problem is, I really can't afford to live downtown. It's too expensive. But at least you could save some money by walking to work. Three. I wish I could find a new apartment. I'm ready for a change. Why, Karen? What's wrong with the place you're living now? Well, it's dingy and cramped. I don't know why I rented it in the first place. I mean, it's very safe and private. I just wish it weren't so small. What kind of place are you looking for exactly? Some place that's more spacious, but not too expensive. Good luck. Four. So, Doug, how do you like your new apartment? I love it. It's great. What do you like about it? Do you remember how dark my old apartment was? Yeah, it was kind of depressing. 
Well, my new apartment is on the top floor, so it's nice and bright. Is there anything you don't like? Some of the apartments on the first floor have a small garden, and I'd like to grow flowers or maybe a few vegetables. So I kind of wish I lived on the first floor. I guess you can't have everything. All right, guys. Podemos escuchar el listening. Are there any words that you didn't recognize or that you don't know? Nope. Okay. Vamos a ver si es cierto. Okay. So let's see. Ahorita estamos free, right? Podemos contestar quienes querramos contestar. So let's review. Why does Jen like her new apartment? Number one, why does she like her new apartment? Mm -hmm. so listening again. Do you want to listen again? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. No problem. Vamos a escucharlo otra vez. There you go. Please, please, yes. Listen to the Check the correct answers. One. I just love my new apartment. That's great, Jen. What do you like about it? Everything. First of all, it's not as noisy as my old apartment. Yeah, it was pretty noisy. And another thing, it has two bathrooms. My family visits me often, so it'll be more convenient. That's good. And what's the rent like? That's what I like the most. It's not as expensive as my old apartment. I can finally start saving some money. Two. Okay. Hoy si pudimos escuchar. What does she like about her new apartment? It's cheaper than her old apartment. Cheaper than the old apartment. That is correct. Jen likes her new apartment because it's cheaper, right, than the one she had before. No, that's yeah. number two. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. In this yeah. conversation, she said, first of all, how do you write it? Yes. Ahorita lo vamos a poner aquí. You write that. First of all. Primero que nada. First of all. Oh, first. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Very good question. First of all, I see. Let's do number two. Gosh, okay. Second 38, according to Second 38. That's what I like the most. It's not as expensive as my old apartment. I can finally start saving some money. Two. I was late to work again today. There's just too much traffic. I know. And then there are never enough parking spaces. Exactly. I can never find a place to park my car. So, Seth, why don't you move downtown? You could live near your office. I'd like to. The problem is, I really can't afford to live downtown. It's too expensive. But at least you could save some money by walking to work. Okay. Why does Seth want to live downtown? Mm. He works there. There are more that parking spaces. There are more parking spaces or because it's close to his work? Yes. Yes, what? Yes. Yes, what? Just does he work there or yes, there are more parking spaces? There are more parking spaces. He works there. Because he works, he works there. there. That is correct. 
he works there. Por eso ella le dice que he can walk. If he lives downtown, he can save money by walking to work instead of driving. Excellent. He wants to live downtown because he works there. Y así poder irse caminando, right? Now, perfect. Okay, guys, and let's do number three. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. Three. I wish I could find a new apartment. I'm ready for a change. Why, Karen? What's wrong with the place you're living now? Well, it's dingy and cramped. I don't know why I rented it in the first place. I mean, it's very safe and private. I just wish it weren't so small. What kind of place are you looking for exactly? Some place that's more spacious, but not too expensive. Good luck. Four. So, Doug, how do you like your new apartment? I love it. It's great. What do you like about it? Do you remember how dark my old apartment was? Yeah, it was kind of depressing. Well, my new apartment is on the top floor, so it's nice and bright. Is there anything you don't like? Some of the apartments on the first floor have a small garden, and I'd like to grow flowers or maybe a few vegetables. So I kind of wish I lived on the first floor. I guess you can't have everything. There we go. Estos últimos los escuchamos ambos de un solo, right? So, ¿por qué a Karen uh, no le gusta su apartment? Why is it? Because it is what? It is too small. Too small. Too small. That is correct. Because Karen's apartment is too small and cramped. Excellent. And what does Doug wish his apartment was more like? Wear more, like, I'm sorry. On the first floor. Uh, on the first, on the first floor. floor. That is correct. He wishes his apartment were on the first floor. Para poder cosechar his vegetables and flowers, right? Excellent. Let's go ahead and move on to exercise B, vocabulary. Now, for this exercise, we just have four sections, just four sections, guys. Now, veámoslo. Ustedes me pueden contestar, así como de la misma manera lo hemos estado haciendo. So, let's see. I love my neighborhood. It's very... It's very safe. Very... That is correct. Yeah. ¿Cómo sabemos qué vamos a seleccionar? Entonces, si estoy diciendo que I love my neighborhood, make it make sense, right? No vamos a decir que lo amo porque es peligroso, porque es dangerous. Este es un ejercicio que nos ayuda a usar la lógica, right? Si a mí me encanta mi neighborhood, mi vecindario, es por algo bueno, right? Entonces, I love my neighborhood. Excellent. Uh, safe. Very right. safe, teacher. Correct. Now, number two, I live on a very busy street. It can get a little bit. It's for sure. Noisy, noisy. Noisy, that is noisy. correct. Ruidoso, right? Yes, si on a busy street. A busy street is a street where a lot of cars go by, right? Donde pasan muchos carros. A lot of cars go by, so it can get noisy because of the cars and the honks por los, los pitos de los carros. It can get a bit noisy. Now, it's to have parking spaces near my apartment. Comfortable. 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 Convenient. 
convenient, comfortable. Uh, per the platform, la respuesta correcta sería convenient, porque es conveniente, right? Es conveniente para mí tener parqueo cerca. Comfortable, yo, uh, digamos, usando las reglas de la vida, <ríe> sí diríamos que comfortable is also valid. Eh, pero la razón por la que si la colocan no les va a dar correcta es porque comfortable se usa más para cosas que usamos, por ejemplo, clothes, or for things that we use, como sofa, the bed, my bed is comfortable, the couch is comfortable, the sofa is comfortable, the shirt uh, is comfortable. Y si son cosas que nos vienen bien, como parqueos o algo así, then that's convenient, right? Pero yo diría que ambas están bien. Good work. Dingy. Uh, dingy. Yes. Dingy, okay. So dingy is um, el opuesto. Dingy is not good. It's like it's uh, the opposite to convenient. Como inconvenient. Una palabra... Um, Como un modismo para decir inconvenient. Inconveniente, dingy. That's dingy. No se usa mucho la verdad. Um, and number four. Our house is a very modern and very bright. It has... Huge. Huge windows. That is correct. Is very modern and very bright. Si nos dice que es very bright, bien iluminado, tiene que tener grandes ventanas, right? Para que entre mucha luz. So, it has huge windows. Excellent. Any questions, guys, about this exercise? Uh, can you give, give us an example uh, using as, as? With these sentences, teacher. Oh, you say uh, como comparative. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Using these sentences, lo podríamos, veamos. Vamos a convertirlas. Recordemos que si vamos a usar as, debemos de compararlo con algo. Debemos de tener otra cosa con lo que compararlo siempre. Deben ser dos. Entonces, podríamos decir para number one, I love my neighborhood. It's very, um, en vez de very, entonces diríamos, my I love, uy, en negro. I love my neighborhood. Neighbor, uh, neighborhood. It isn't as dangerous as my previous one. Lo comparamos con el vecindario, con el neighborhood que teníamos antes, por ejemplo. I love my neighborhood. It isn't as dangerous as my previous one. Right? Otro ejemplo. Veamos el number two. I live on a very busy street. It can get a little bit noisy, right? Um, Podríamos decir, I live on a very busy street. It isn't, it is as noisy as the ones in the city. Right? Podríamos decir, es tan ruidosa, it is as noisy as the ones in the city. Es tan ruidosa como las de la ciudad. Right? Esto le estoy agregando yo algo, porque como estas oraciones no tienen otra cosa con que comparar, yo le tengo que agregar algo. Si quiero hacerlo en comparative, con using as, entonces siempre debo compararlo con algo más. No puedo solo ponerse. Right? Veamos otro. Ay. Veamos otro. Number three. Uh, it's convenient to have parking spaces near my apartment. 
it is as convenient to have parking spaces as it is to have what um a garage for the hemp si vivimos en un complejo it is as convenient to have a to have parking spaces as it is to have a garage un garage privado a tener varios lugares de parqueo right it is as convenient igual de conveniente to have parking spaces as it is to have a garage and last example our house is very modern and very bright yes to see lo podríamos decir our house is not as modern as it is bright. Nuestra casa no es tan moderna como lo es de iluminada, right? Es más iluminada de lo que es moderna, right? Our house is not as modern as it is bright. O our house or this house is as modern as the other one. Esta casa es igual de moderna que la otra. ¿Sí? Is that good? Yes, yes. Thanks, teacher. Cool, perfect. Good question. Let's move on to exercise, no, uh, exercise C. Enough and not enough. Right, countables and uncountables. Debemos completar. We just have three exercises. Uy. Misma dinámica. Number one, our apartment is too small. There are not enough rooms. That is correct. There are not enough rooms. ¿Por qué no podemos decir not space enough? Recordemos, guys, si vamos a decir, ok, esta es la respuesta. There are not enough rooms. Pero ¿por qué la otra no es? Tenemos que entender cuál es el error también. ¿Por qué no puede ser not space enough? No countable. Porque es non-countable. Y non-countable iría con are o con is. Is. That is correct. Y aparte de eso sería, there is not enough space, al revés, there's not enough space, correcto, not enough rooms, también debemos comprender si una no es correcta, por qué no es correcta, right, number two, people can see into our house, there is not enough privacy, not enough privacy, that is correct, there is not enough privacy. Excellent. Number three, my car is too small. It doesn't have enough, enough space. space. Enough space. That is correct. It doesn't have enough space. Excellent. Let's review exercise D. Antes vimos not enough y ahora vamos a practicar as many or as much for countables or uncountables. We have three exercises as well. So let's see. Number one, same dynamic. My apartment doesn't have my old one. Many windows. Window. Y solo eso o tendríamos que usar as? Only that. Only that? Ustedes dirían, my apartment doesn't have many windows, my old one. Mm -hmm. 
o diríamos, my apartment doesn't have as many windows as my old one. As my old one. That is correct. Estamos haciendo una comparación. Entonces tendríamos que decir, my apartment doesn't have as many windows as my old one. Solo porque no lo diga el exercise, no significa que nosotros mentalmente no lo debamos saber, right? Com comparisons always have as. So, my apartment doesn't have as many windows as my old one. That is correct. Many, porque windows is a countable noun. One window, two windows, three windows. Number two. Our house is your apartment. As convenient as your apartment. That is correct. As convenient as your apartment. Perfect. And number three. Modern apartments often don't have older one. As much space as older one. As much space, that is correct. Why as much and not as many? Because it's an uncountable noun. Because it's an uncountable noun, correct. Space is an uncountable noun. Yo no puedo decir one space, two spaces, three spaces, sino a lot of space, very little space, no space, a, mm, etc. Huge space. Excellent. Now, exercise E is about expressing wishes. We have to complete the sentences using I wish and remember that we are always to use where or would or anything like that, right? So we have three exercises as well. Number one, I don't like my job. I wish. It were more fun. I wish it were my, more fun. Siempre con wish, que digamos, I wish. Vamos a usar where for all pronouns. Good. Number two, I can't find my new cell phone. I wish. It could find it. I, I wish I could find it. Perfect. Would or could, right? Finally, my boyfriend isn't in good shape. I wish. He would in good shape. I wish he were in good shape. That is correct. For all pronouns, we are to use where. Excellent. Any questions about this one, guys? No? All right. Let's move on to the next one. Then. Exercise F is about the simple past versus the present perfect. Que lo vimos hasta el cansancio, right? So we have to complete the conversations. And we have four converse, well, four bits of conversations. Same dynamic. Tenemos que ver qué es lo mejor que podemos ocupar. Si el past simple or simple past or el present perfect, depending on the sentence, right? Si vamos a usar el simple past o vamos a usar el participio porque es el present perfect. So let's review. Vamos a ver cómo está esta lógica. So, same dynamic. Have you ever Spanish food? Eating. 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 That is correct. Have you ever, uh, have you ever eaten? Spanish food? Participio. Have? Present perfect. Answer. Yes, I have. I to a Spanish I restaurant. I went. I went. went. Spanish I went. That is correct. I went to a Spanish restaurant last week. 
Sample passed. Good. Did you? Like did you like, like it? Did you like, okay. like it? Did you like it? Okay. You correct. Yeah. Did you like it? Why in the present? Por qué like an infinitive form? Por qué en present? Porque ya lleva el auxiliar. Did. Did. That is correct. Because. Did. We already did. That is correct. Because we already used. Uh, we already used did. Right? So we have to use the verb in the infinitive form. Finally, yes. It was delicious. It was delicious. It was delicious. delicious. Correct. Yes, it was delicious. That is correct. It was delicious. Perfect. Now. Exercise G is about the future with will or going to. We're going to complete the conversations using will or going to, right? Y esto nos va a ayudar a escoger um, la, la correcta gramática, right? So let's review. What after this, uh, after class today? What are you going to do after class today? Thank you, Maritza. That is correct. What are you going to do? Are, nuestro verb to be al principio, porque es una pregunta. You, subject, going to, and then verb, do. What are you going to do after class? Perfect. I'm definitely... A movie with a friend. Going to watch. Going to watch a movie with a friend. That is correct. Estamos usando verb to be, right? Si yo digo I am, entonces going to. Porque no puedo decir I am will. Recordemos que con will no se ocupa go, uh, the verb to be. You know que solo usamos el subject. Tendríamos que decir. I will definitely, pero como decimos I am, entonces I am going to. Eso les puede servir como una keyword. Now, number three, when their vacation. Are they going to take their vacation? That is correct. When are they going to take their vacation? Are Verb to be, subject, going to, and verb. When are they going to take their vacation? Perfect. And finally, I think they, on a cruise in June or July. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. That is correct. No verb to be. Así que sabemos que usamos will. I think they will go. Excellent. And now we have exercise H, and that is the final part of this final exam, guys. Vamos a abrirlo en otra ventana para verlo bien y poder darle zoom. Y vamos a leerlo, okay? So let's see, we are 18 people right now. Estamos 18 personas. I don't think that que todos vamos a poder pasar a leer, but let's try to do it. Okay, let's see. We have three, one, two, three, four. Let's try, okay? Veamos cuántos podemos pasar. Hopefully, podemos pasar todo. Les voy a poner aquí hasta donde vamos a llegar con esta señalita. Okay, vamos a comenzar a leer Maritza desde Hi Paula hasta aquí. Okay. Hi Paula, eh, greeting from Ban Banco. Fernando and I are having a really 
good time. Good, good time. It's a great city for shopping. Yesterday we went to a just weekend market. Excellent, Marisa. Thank you. Went to a huge, huge weekend market. Uno muy grande, right? Huge. Excellent. Huge. huge. That's correct. Let's continue, Ariel. Desde aquí hasta aquí. Okay. It was full of really interesting things to buy, especially clothes. Thank you so much, Ariel. Let's continue, Claudia, from here up until here. And the prices are great. Things here are not nearly as expensive as they are at home. Thank you so much, Claudia. Excellent. Let's continue, Edgardo. Aquí. Hasta aquí. Do you listen to me, teacher? Yes. Okay. Of course, Fernando tells me I'm spending too much money, but you know him. He never buys anything. <laughs> Excellent, Edgardo. Perfect. Me encanta la emoción de la aventura. Excellent. Now let's continue Emerson. Desde aquí hasta... Mm -mm -mm. Have you ever eaten Thai, thai food? It's delicious. We just had a wonderful dinner in one of the restaurants of the river. <gasps> wow, amazing pronunciation. I'm so proud. Excellent pronunciation, Emerson. Excellent, really. Thanks, teacher. Awesome. Now let's continue, Gavi. From here until here. Okay, uh, Fernando ordered a green curry and rice, and I had my favorite dish, microp, crispy noodles with shrimp and chicken. Excellent, Gabby. Thank you. Crispy noodles with shrimp and chicken sounds good, right? Let's continue, Joel. Aquí. Hasta aquí. Officer, we had fried bananas. Everything mm -hmm. was so good. It was also fun to watch the boat pass by. Perfect, Joel. Excellent. Very good pronunciation. Let's go, Carla, from here until here. Foreigners. Hello, Carla. Okay, no problem. Let's continue, Catherine. One thing I've noticed is that some restaurants make their curries less spicy for foreigners. Yes, foreigners, perfect. Thank you so much. Now let's continue, Lisette. From here, yesterday, until us. Hi. Yesterday, I told our waiter, this curry is, is not hot enough for use. For us. Perfect. And let's continue, Marcela, here until here. He smiled and said, some foreigners don't like spicy food. Then he brought us another curry that was much hotter. Perfect, Marcela. Thank you very much. And let's finish. Hasta el final. Uh, Beatriz. Hello? Okay, no problem. Let's finish, uh, Samuel. Time to stop. We're flying home tomorrow, so I uh, see you soon, Rosa. Excellent, Samuel. Thank you very much. 
All right, okay. guys. So that was our reading. And let's do the exercises. Como ustedes pueden ver, we just have five exercises. Y debemos escoger la opción correcta. Uh, the true or false, right? So is Bangkok a good place for shopping? True or false? True. True. Excellent. And you can buy most things except clothes. Is that true? False. 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 You can buy clothes. And the prices false. in the market are very reasonable. True or false? False. True. 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 It's true. Son true. very reasonable. Son más baratos que en su ciudad, dice ella. Entonces, son razonables. They're reasonable. It's true. And me uh, crab is the Thai name for green curry. False. 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 That is correct. Oh. It's shrimp con chicken and no sé qué más, right? Fried noodle. And number five, all foreign visitors love Thailand's hot and spicy food. True or false? False. 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 Toda la vida. False. False. <laughs> false. Toda la vida, dicen. That is correct. False. 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 That is correct, guys. Porque aquí nos dice en el reading. Uy, no se re... Aquí nos dice en el reading, most foreigners don't like spicy food, right? Pero ellos sí querían spicy food. All right, guys. Y eso es todo hoy sí, oficialmente, extraoficialmente y de todas las maneras. Hemos terminado nuestro module. Yes, ahí está. Ay, clapping, Edgardo. Yes, guys. So, déjenme ponerles esto otra vez porque you deserve it. Ahora que ya estamos más, si les vuelvo a mencionar, mm. ustedes lo hicieron. Ay, sí, es que me he la vista, I think. You deserve it. Ustedes lo hicieron. Ustedes han puesto todo el esfuerzo uh, for this module, guys. And I do hope que les vaya súper, súper, súper bien en su next module. Cualquier cosa, siempre estoy a la orden. If you have any questions whatsoever, Aún uh, si ya no les voy a dar clases, si ustedes tienen any questions or you need any help with anything, me tienen en WhatsApp, you can ask me for anything y siempre estoy disponible for any doubts, ¿ok? Mm -hmm. eh, y siempre recuerden que si yo puedo, ustedes pueden, nada les dice que no pueden aprender, ¿ok? Siempre proceso continuo, practiquen muchísimo, eh, fuércense ustedes mismos a aprender eh, ya van a ver que no dan clases porque no quieren porque ya están un paso más cerca ya pasan a Intermediate 2 en January, por favor, por favor por favor, si no han terminado su platform, háganlo este día para que no tengan ningún problema para pasar a su siguiente módulo ok guys okay. excellent okay. guys ok, yeah. entonces solo decirles que muchas okay, gracias teacher por haber sido parte de este module. It's been my pleasure to nice you. to meet you, teacher. It was very nice to meet you too, my pleasure. And I nice to meet you too. A... Nice to meet you too, guys. Y que tengan muy feliz Navidad y Año Nuevo. Feliz Navidad y Año Nuevo. Thanks, teacher. All right, guys. See you. Thank you, teacher. Bye, Hello, guys. Hello, teacher. Bye. Good night, Good night everyone. Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night, Thanks for everything. Good night, teacher. Bye.